welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a first year PhD student in history and African American studies at Yale. And today I'm finally getting around to the video that many of you have been waiting for, my apartment tour. I'm also gonna give you some details related to living in New Haven at the end of this video and give you kind of a price range of the different types of living situations. If you've perhaps gotten into Yale and are heading to New Haven this fall, congratulations. And I have lots of information to share with you all. So make sure to stick around until the end if you want to know information related to actually living and moving to New Haven. So just some quick background. I toured apartments when I came for visiting students weekend last year, which was around March 1st, right before the pandemic. And I actually toured a couple different properties and ended up settling on this particular building due to location. I live in downtown New Haven and I pay $13.20 for my apartment. And that includes the rent that I also pay to have my dog moo. If she did not live with me, my rent would be $12.95, which is on the low end of one bedroom apartments for a single person. There are many other inexpensive options. So again, stick around to the end if you wanna know what those are. There's also definitely more high-end properties in the area, but I wanted something that would work within my stipend. PhD students do not make very much money and this rent definitely makes up about half of my income. I am a PhD student, but I'm also a content creator and business owner. So a lot of the things that I have, I did save up for and I did pay for everything on my own. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into it and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so when you enter the apartment, you have the front door and then this blank wall that was here. So I ended up putting this calendar that my friend Danielle gave me for Christmas and it's the beloved RBG. And then here I have all of my masks, my keys and a hat. And then next to the door, I have my suitcases. There wasn't a great place to store it, mostly because I have a lot of clothes that I need to donate. And so they're in boxes and you'll see that when we go into the closet and into the bedroom. But then to the left of that, we've got my main bookcase. So in this bookcase, I have everything on early America and slavery. The first shelf is dedicated to Thomas Jefferson as a statesman, as well as his writings, his relationships with Adams, as well as Madison. And then this shelf here is dedicated to Jefferson and slavery. It includes works by Annette Gordon-Reed, Lucia Stanton, etc. And then over here, we move into the quote unquote founding fathers. So we've got things on James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, George Washington, Adams, etc. Down here, we've got some of the American Revolution as well as the colonial period. So we have the early American canon here. We've got the economic interpretations of the constitution by Charles Beard. We've got Gordon Wood, we've got Bernard Balin, Thomas Paine, all of that. And then in this section over here, we have Mark Edling, Joseph Gnapp, another Gordon Wood, Alan Taylor, etc. So lots of early America books here. And then we move on and we are in various perspectives of the American Revolution. So loyalism, we've got women, and then we move on specifically to slavery and enslaved persons in the American Revolution. Then on to the American slavery section, which is not inclusive of everything that I own. This is just a little bit. So we've got Manisha Shana, who wrote this excellent book on abolition. We've got Stamp from the Beginning by Abram Kendi, The Matter of Color by Leon Higginbotham. And then down here is kind of a hodgepodge of things related to colonial early America, as well as law. I also have the Journal of the Early Republic over here. So lots to get through. And then below that, we've got Moo's Food and Water Bowl. All right, so now we're in the kitchen and this is my coffee section. So I have my Nespresso pods here, uh, my French press, some honey, my Virtura line Nespresso machine, my Nespresso frother, as well as a bunch of different straws. In this cabinet here, we've got some treats for Moo up here, some mugs, glasses, etc. here, as well as plates. And then down below that, I have this drawer here, which has all of my tea and extra Nespresso pods. And then down here, I have Moose kibble and other types of Tupperware. Over here, we've just got the basic appliances. So oven, stovetop, and the microwave. Above the microwave, I keep all of my spices and oils and cooking things. And to the right, I keep all of my starches. So I've got all of my pasta, rice, etc. 
And then to the right, we've got my air fryer, my knives, some wine, as well as basic cooking things, such as salt, pepper, and coconut oil. And then above that, we've got all of my baking things, boxes of baking things, oatmeal. Below that, we've got a massive collection of nut butters. We've definitely got the cookie butter because that's a necessity. And then we've got lots of granola. Below that, we just basically have the essential cooking thing. So we've got like Ziploc bags and then we've got my oven mitts. And down here, we have pots and pans. All right, so now we are over to the fridge. My friend Natalie is getting married very soon. So I have her little uh, magnet on my fridge in the freezer. We've got all the necessities as per usual. And down below, we've got a whole lot of HelloFresh and everything you could need. Above my fridge, I keep a basket of snacks, which has lots of nuts and dried fruit and things. I made brownies the other night and then I like to make up my own trail mix. All right, and then if you move to the right, we've got the trash can and recycling. And then we have this beautiful picture of James Baldwin that my dad sent me. Here we've got my blender, my toaster, my fruit bowl, bread. And here's kind of my casual drawer. I keep my lactose pills, Advil, kitchen towels, that kind of stuff in here. And then down here, we've got my mixing bowls, rice cooker, etc. We've got the dishwasher. And then under the sink, we've got all the basic appliances. And then over here, we've got things for all my silverware and cooking utensils. And then over here, we have my fellow water heater. And this one is just, it's so beautiful. And I love using that with my French press. And now we are in to the living room section. So I get asked about my couch all the time. It is the article Sven couch. And I don't exactly remember what color it's in. I think it's in the ivory or something, but it is definitely a gray couch. It is so comfortable. It was a huge investment. It was a lot of money, but it was definitely worth it because I love it. As you can see, Moo loves it. And it is definitely one of my favorite things about this apartment. So then above my couch, I have these pictures. I have this middle piece I got from Etsy and then these four pieces on the outside I got from Decenio. All of the frames were from Decenio and I just love them. To the left, we've got my lamp and my router. And then we have all of these random boxes for the modern horse as well as this big basket, which currently has a bunch of stuff for the modern horse, but will hopefully be empty soon. My coffee table, on the other hand, I'm not a huge fan of. I actually bought it on Amazon and it is cheap and wobbly and it just it looks cheap and i would definitely replace it if i could underneath i have this gigantic basket that i got from amazon and this was such a great idea i put all of the throw blankets and things in here and it just keeps the apartment looking really neat and then on top of the coffee table i have a leaves candle as well as some books and some treats for moo all right, and then when you're sitting on the couch, you see this little organizational cabinet. And this I actually bought from Target and it was one of the best purchases I ever made because it stores all of my random clutter. So this used to be like in the windowsill and on top of the counters and it just looks so much better tucked away. So I have all of my camera gear, my microphone in there is my kind of catch all. So that's where I keep my wallet. This is the basket for Moo where I keep her collars, harnesses, all that kind of stuff. And then down here I have my tech basket as well as just other organizational things. I have my extra pens, my little travel case with all my tech when I have to travel. It is just the perfect organizational feature and it wasn't that much money. I mean, it was pretty much comparable to Ikea. Then I didn't really know where to put my TV because there's obviously a weird shape to this apartment. And so there wasn't a whole lot of room. So I ended up putting it in the windowsill and it works fine there. Um, I don't like that all the cables are exposed, but that's just being nitpicky. And then to the left, I have my full length mirror and I love it. I got this one from Amazon, but I just love the shape of it. And it is the perfect height for my very tall self. Now we're moving on to the part where I feel like most of you want to know what is on my desk. So I have the autonomous AI standing desk. So as you can see, it can move up and it can move down. 
I just love it because I get very uncomfortable sitting down for a long period of time and I'm at my desk pretty much all day. So it's very convenient. I also got the Ergo chair and this one's super comfortable. It is a bit pricey, but in the long run, I'm going to be doing this PhD for six years and I wanted somewhere comfortable to sit. So I have the 27 inch MacBook. If you want all the specs, I can have them down below. And below that I have a monitor stand and my glasses. Here I have this tiny whiteboard where I keep my random to-dos for the day, keyboard, all of that. To the right, I have my MacBook Pro, my planner, my iPad, and above that we've got notebooks, journals, and all that kind of stuff. I love these lights. These are the Philips Hughes, I think it's the Sono lights. They will be linked down below as well. And then I always keep a glass of water on my desk and above is my little planner. So this is how I plan all of my content for YouTube, Instagram, accepted consulting, and everything in between. And to the left of my desk is my Peloton. I have the Peloton Bike Plus. So it's got the metal plating and it's got the swivel screen. So you can actually move this around then above that i have these prints of washington dc because it is my favorite city in the entire world little overview from this angle so overall very large apartment for just one person and her dog i just love it here all right so now we're gonna head into the hallway on the wall i installed this hook where i keep my main handbag and then i actually hang my backpack on the closet and here we've just got a basic coat closet and other random things i've got boxes of clothes that need to be donated down there and next to that we've got my dyson vacuum which my grandmother gifted to me i just love it it works so well and then we have another bookcase above the bookcase we've got the patron saint rbg and this random reindeer that my friend charlie gave me back at oxford and in here we've got so many different types of books. It's largely African-American history. This one section is kind of on mass incarceration. We've got some of the civil rights movement. And then it kind of gets a little random. So we've got some stuff on the late 19th century with Frederick Douglass. And then obviously there's a Roosevelt book, which is mid 20th century. And then you just move down and there's lots on feminism and we've got my old notebooks and all that kind of stuff. Over here, we've got all of my shoes. So we've got my snow boots, my rain boots, my riding boots, my Yale flag, all of my pairs of Toms, all of my flats, all of that kind of stuff and my extra suitcase. And now I'll take you into the bathroom. So I apologize for the ugly yellow lighting, but this is the bathroom. It's very large for a one bedroom apartment and actually has a fair amount of storage. So in here we've got deodorant and other types of things, stuff for my hair, Olaplex over here. We've got some skin stuff and some medication. And then on the counter, I just have some hair tools, other types of organizational stuff with extra powder. We've got my skincare things, extra brushes that I honestly just don't ever use. And then this other container. All right, and then under the sink, we've got my medication, shampoos and things. And then under this, I actually got this little organizer from Amazon and it is just perfect. Just holds all my stuff and keeps it nice and organized. And then we obviously have my shower, which I'm sure you guys have all seen a shower. So I don't think I need to show you that. I keep a laundry basket in here and all of these extra towels on a rack that I got at Target. Now heading into the bedroom, we have this bed frame, which I actually got from Target and the mattress, which is from Layla mattress. The bedding, this quilt is from Amazon and then the duvet cover underneath there is actually from West Elm. Above that, we've got these three prints from New York. So we've got the Empire State Building, the Flatiron and the Brooklyn Bridge. To the right of my bed, we have my nightstand, which on top of it has a lamp from Target. So then on the table, we've got the Hatchery Store Sleep Sounds Machine and the Vitruvi Diffuser, as well as a glass of water. In here, I keep earplugs, my inhalers, my night mask, and all of my different essential oils. And then down here, I have a book and some treats for Lou. 
Over here, we've got a little bowl for Moo so she has water at night. All right, then you swing around and we've got my dresser. This is one that I actually got off of Wayfair and I actually think it's pretty decent quality for what it is. And it has a decent amount of storage. I think that these drawers can be a little shallow, but I think that they work quite well. So in here, I have all of my leggings. Then in here, we've got long sleeve shirts, underwear, sleeping stuff like pajamas and things, t-shirts, and my sweatshirts. Above that, we have this round mirror, which I believe I got from either Target or from Amazon. I'll go ahead and link that down below. Over here, we have my closet, which is currently stocked to the brim because there's, again, a bunch of clothes that I need to donate. So up here, I have my shorts, my skirts, my jeans, and then we've got dresses and then everything is color coded. And then below that, we've got extra bedding and all the clothes that need to be donated. And then over here, we have this leaning ladder bookcase, which I just love. I have these pictures of me and my friend Katie, me and my brother, my parents, myself as a little child. We have some books here and this print of John Lewis that my dad got for me. Jane Austen, a old diary, a fictional book that I actually really enjoyed. Some watches and things. This is related to educational inequality and the origins of slavery and the Ivy League. Down here we have some fictional books as well as a memoir and some extra kind of jewelry holders that are just empty. And then down here we have the feminist section. So we've got Our Bodies Ourselves. We have books on Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Sonia Sotomayor, Bell Hooks, and then we have a couple books that I needed to have for class. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that little apartment tour. I love this space. I love being able to live alone and it is a very spacious apartment, especially for one person. I came from Northern California where rent is just astronomical and where you can barely get a studio apartment for like three or $4,000 a month. So to me, this was a steal. And on top of the actual physical space. It's in a very good location. I'm very close to campus. I am in walking distance of pretty much everything that I need to get to in town. So I'm pretty much in the perfect location. And then on top of that, it is a secure building and it also has a gym downstairs, which I do not use because I don't really feel safe doing that right now. But there is also a bike rack in case you wanted to bring a bike here. And that is pretty much the same with all of the other properties within this management group. If you are looking to move to New Haven and you want to know specifically what property groups to potentially look for or which ones to avoid, please go ahead and shoot me an email. I don't feel comfortable sharing that in a video, but I'm happy to give you some suggestions over email. About a 20 minute walk away from campus is the suburbs and it's known as either Pleasant Hill or East Rock. East Rock is where a lot of the professors or graduate students live. It's very quiet. There are a lot of homes, town homes, as well as homes that have been separated into individual apartments. And you can get a range from anywhere from a one bedroom apartment for around the same rent that I pay here, which is 1320, or you can move in with several roommates and get your rent as low as 650 a month. So you just need to be able to shop around depending on what your budget is. For me, I knew I wanted to live alone and I wanted to live in downtown. So I was willing to pay a little bit more and to have a side hustle in order to make up the rest of the income that I needed in order to live comfortably. That being said, there's also stuff on the high end. If you are moving here with your family or with a partner, or if you have more disposable income outside of your academic stipend, then there are also apartments such as the Audubon or State Street where they have really nice one bedroom apartments as well as studios that can run you anywhere from $1,600 a month for a low end studio on the first or second floor, all the way up to 2,800 for a one bedroom apartment with a walk-in closet, standing shower, like all of the features that you could ever want, as well as a pool, study lounges, bars, gaming rooms, all of those kinds of things. So there really is a huge range of the things that are available to you in New Haven in terms of rent. And I would just recommend shopping around. You can look at apartments.com, but it can sometimes be a little unreliable. You do wanna make sure that you know someone in New Haven that can tell you what buildings to look out for. There are certain property 
property management groups in particular that you want to avoid just because they have very low ratings in terms of making sure that your apartment is well maintained. Whereas if you find a property via referral, it's often a lot better because then you know how they maintain their buildings. And I got really lucky with the management group that I'm currently with. I think they do an excellent job maintaining my own building. Whenever I've needed repairs, they've come out within a couple of days and I personally really love my apartment. I would say the four main areas in New Haven that most graduate students live is in Prospect Hill, East Rock, downtown or Worcester Square. There are apartments in Worcester Square that are really nice and really updated. It's just a little bit of a walk from campus, but if you don't mind and you're totally fine walking about 15 or 20 minutes in order to get to campus, then I would honestly look in Worcester Square. They've got excellent food. That's where all the pizza spots are. There's grocery stores, pharmacies, etc. Whereas in downtown, you're a little bit limited because it's mostly shopping and some restaurants, whereas some of the more inexpensive and accessible restaurants are in Worcester Square. The other option as a graduate student is to live in graduate student housing offered by Yale, but you have to be a first year student. I've heard that the apartments are really nice. I've never seen one, but they are in a really good location. They're about five, 10 minutes from campus and they're in a really nice part of town. So those are the options that are the most common. If you have any questions in particular about living in New Haven, please leave me a comment. Or if you have specific questions and you need some advice about property management groups, again, just shoot me an email happy to talk to you and let you know which ones to look out for and which ones may be best to get in contact with. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed and that you got some information as well as some aesthetic content that you enjoyed watching. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.